Hello and welcome to another Cypher 2 tutorial. In this video we're going to be making a sound completely from scratch. The sound we're going to make is going to sound something like this. So let's get stuck in. When you first load Cypher 2 it'll be in its initialized state, but if you've been loading presets you can easily get back to that state by going up to the menu here and loading the initialization preset. So the sound we're going to make in this tutorial video is a 2D sound. 2D presets are traditional presets designed to be played on a normal MIDI controller. 5D presets are designed to be played on an MPE controller such as the Roly Seaboard Rise and others. So in this tutorial we're just making a simple 2D preset, but we will be looking at how to make that preset 5D in the tutorial after this one. So to make sure that my MIDI controller keyboard is properly mapped I'm going to go up here to the top of the browser and click this 2D button. And what that does is it changes some of Cypher 2's default MIDI mappings in order to work correctly with the type of keyboard you're using. So we're going to start this sound with oscillator 1 and currently it's just set to a sawtooth waveform. Now we're going to be using FM in this sound so I'm going to change it to a sine waveform firstly by pulling the oscillator 1 waveform down to 0% which turns it into a triangle wave. Then I'm going to click this small sine wave button down here which transforms it into a sine wave. We're going to be using this control here which is the oscillator 1 FM2 control which controls the amount of oscillator 2 which will modulate the frequency of oscillator 1. So you can hear there the effect that has on the sound. Now we're not hearing oscillator 2 because oscillator 2's level is at 0, but it's still having an effect on oscillator 1. And we can hear this by changing the pitch of oscillator 2. I'm going to change this one to a sine wave as well, and we're going to get set it to um, a scale of about 3 here. Now if I right click on this control, you'll see the snap menu. And the snap menu allows me to change the way in which the oscillator is tuned. Off means there's no quantization of the control, so you can make very fine tuning adjustments. Just is just intonation. Harmonic works in multiples of the bass frequency, which is very good for FM, and equal is equal temperament. For this one I'm going to choose harmonic, and we're going to go for a scale of about 3. Ok so we've got some kind of tone there, it's not particularly interesting. The first thing we're going to do is put some envelope control over the amount of the frequency modulation. Up at the top here is the transmod system. Each one of these slots is a modulation source, and you can see its name at the top of the slot there. These can be changed. If we double click on a slot, the visualizer section in the center here turns into a way to assign that modulation source. So we can see here that the source type is envelopes and I'm using the envelope 1 main output. Envelope 1 is this envelope down here, and I'm going to use it to modulate the amount of FM on oscillator 1. Now that's given us a kind of pluck sound because the envelope is changing the amount of frequency modulation over time. So it starts off very bright when the envelope is high up, and as the envelope decays away, the amount of frequency modulation tails off. So the sound at this point is still quite static. What I'd like to do is have the amount that that envelope controls the frequency modulation to be scaled by the velocity, which is how hard I hit the keys. That's made easy using this scale section. I'm going to select polyphonic sources, and within there I'm going to select note velocity. So now this source is multiplied by this scale. And we might just increase the amount a little bit more. And I think we'll increase the decay of the envelope 1 the decay and the release to maybe sort of around 2 seconds, and we might just increase the release of the amplitude envelope to something similar. Mm -hmm. 
That's quite nice, a bell-like tone. So why don't we use an LFO to add a bit of texture to this sound? I'm going to select LFO1 and we're going to use that to apply a little bit of pitch modulation. This modulation source here, if you look closely, you can see it's labeled as LFO1+. Plus. Now this is a unipolar modulation source, which means it only goes from zero to one. So when I apply it to the fine tune here, you can see it's only going up in tune. And what I want to do is to have it sweep through zero, down into a negative amount, and then up into a positive amount. So I'm going to change that modulation source. Again, I'll double click. We're already in the LFO section, and I'm going to select the bipolar version of LFO1. And you can see now, if you look at the little blue signifier, that it's modulating above and below that center frequency that the fine tune is set to. Now the LFO is going a little slowly at the moment, so I'm going to take the LFO here and speed it up a little. Okay, that's not bad, but I don't want it to be there all the time. And as is typical with vibrato, you often use the modulation wheel in order to introduce it. So, as we did do with the envelope and the velocity, we're going to go to the scale section. I'm going to select monophonic because the modulation wheel is actually a monophonic source. And I'm going to select mod wheel. And there we've introduced some vibrato via the modulation wheel. Let's apply some effects. Some chorus perhaps. Just for fun, I'm going to use LFO2 in a very similar way to LFO1. Perhaps a much slower rate for this one. And I'm going to apply this to the panning to give the whole sound some width. So the only thing left to do is save the sound. Click the Save Preset button, give it a name. Now I'd say this is a keyboard type sound, so we'll put it in the keyboard category by giving it a prefix of KB. And I'm going to name this Sweet FM. We can give it a description. And if you want, you can label the performance controls. Performance control one is the mod wheel by default. So I'm going to name this vibrato and I'm going to leave the others blank for now. So join me for the next tutorial in which we'll be looking at how to make this sound five dimensional.